Okay, and we're back. Uh, in this video, what I want to cover is adding some uh, dirt and scratches and smudges to a few of the different glass surfaces we have. We haven't really talked about glass shaders at all past the kind of initial how to set it up, but let's uh let's kind of dive right into that and get some more character in the scene, and we're not so we're not just dealing with perfectly clean uh, textures. So let me turn on my glass surface here. And I will select it. We turn on my viewport overlay so we can see that I have it selected. Okay, so this is what I want to focus on. And the first thing that we need to do is go to the shading viewport. I'm going to get rid of that because I don't need it. Uh, we're going to give it its own uh, own material. So let's get rid of the UV test grid. And we will call this VM glass. Okay. And first thing we need to do is make it look like glass. So I'm going to turn off a few things in my scene just to speed up the viewport a little bit. Because the glass isn't going to preview very well in material preview. We'll need to go into the rendered preview. And so just so that this speeds up a little bit, I will uh, turn those things off. And then let's also turn off the truss. We go. And then the monkey neon sign, hit M, and I'm going to move that to just the collection so it's out of the way. Okay. So we have our glass here. Let's first make it glass. So I'm going to turn the transmission all the way up to one. And you can see it's changed shades in the material preview, but it doesn't actually look like glass. Uh, in the preview here in the Material properties, you can kind of see it, but still it's not looking great. So let's go into rendered view. And you see it's better. But right now it kind of looks like kind of looks like that scene in Independence Day, where the scientist is stuck in with the alien. It's just very foggy in there. So what we need to do is we need to turn down that roughness. And I'm gonna go with a value of 0 0.05. So it's got just a little bit of roughness, but it's pretty clear. And now we can see our monkey heads inside there, as well as the light that's coming through. And you get a little bit of haziness, but not much. Okay, if we zoom well in here, as this kind of resolves, this will take a little bit, a little while, but I can see you get a little bit of haziness. It's not too bad. Okay, so that works. Um, now we need to pay attention to this index of refraction here. So if remember every Every material, every surface has an IOR value. Um, now, for solid things, it usually doesn't matter too much. It's keep it around 1.6 and you'll be fine. For transparent things, this becomes much more impactful. So if we look at our preview here, and in, it may even be apparent here, um, even though this is a simplified scene, maybe I'll turn on the go to this world and see if this if this might help kind of see the effects of it we'll see uh, if we go all the way to one it's gonna uh basically turns invisible uh index of refraction value of one is like there's no glass there at all the light does not bend as it enters the surface and that's what this value refers to index of refraction is the light bending as it enters the surface it's like if you're you're looking at like somebody's arm that's half sticking out of a pool and it looks like their arm is bent that's because the light is refracting as it enters the water. So that's what this value is replicating, and you see with it at 1, uh, there is no obvious indication of glass there. So as we increase this, let's say we go to 1.3, the 1.333, that is the uh, index of refraction of water. So if you were, you were making a pool or even just a, a cup of water, that water would be uh, 1.33. And we can even see the preview here, how this distortion of the grid in the background uh, adjusts. And then as we go up, um, we'll probably end up somewhere around 1.6. Uh, but we can go up to 1.8, 2, 3, and we can kind of see, keep an eye on the preview here, because this is going to give you probably the more obvious uh, indication of what's going on. But as we increase that value, 
and then as we decrease that. So how do you know what value to, to put beside the, the two that I just told you? Well, that's where the internet comes into play. If we go, if we just search for, and I know I've mentioned this before, IOR values. The very first option here is a great, and the most comprehensive list that I've seen. Um, and right at the top here, we have the common materials, and you can see there's glass and there's Pyrex glass, but there's um, IOR values for a number of different things. We have acrylic glass, uh, and then also broken up alphabetically. So we might return to this later in the video, uh, but I'm actually going to go with, uh, we'll say that that's probably going to be like a, a, an acrylic glass on that vending machine. So 1.49 to 1.492. So somewhere in that range is what we'll go with. So I will hit uh, my IOR value. We'll go 1.492. Why not? Okay. So there's my index of refraction set. Now I have some realistic, believable looking glass in there. Okay. That looks great. Now, the only problem with it is that it's too clean. Okay. I've never seen a glass on a public facing window or vending machine or anything like that look this clean. So we need to add some some dirt and grime to it. And the way that we're going to do that is with a smudge texture. Okay, this is what the texture looks like. Uh, and I pulled this from CG Bookcase. We've got a number of different um, options here. We've got dirt and dust. Um, dust wipes, we have handprint if you just want a full on handprint, water droplets. These are all in the surface imperfections section of CG Bookcase. And they also have a great little um, kind of cheat sheet in their um, how to section of how to apply that. And this is basically what we're going to be doing um, to apply it. So let's go through that now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do. We want to use this texture. Uh, let me also go back to the scene world. That's just going to look a little bit. Yeah, I like. Well, maybe not. We'll we'll use the lights of this. It'll make it a little bit more obvious. Uh, but we need to bring in that texture. So I'm just going to drag and drop my image texture in there, and I'm going to hit Control T to give up some mapping nodes so I can control where that texture goes. Go to material preview for this because we will be able to see at least the effects of this in the in material preview. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to we're using this to control the roughness. Okay, so wherever it's smudged, it's going to be more a, a rougher texture. We're going to have more diffuse reflections and highlights. Okay, but if I just plug this straight in to the roughness. Um, well, that's not bad, but we don't have any control over the areas that aren't smudged. Okay, so even if I go into rendered view, and this is a little bit slower to preview, we can see that we are getting more variation, and that's great. But the um, the rest of it is still like the the areas that are not smudged are basically perfectly clear because it's just taking this value straight. So again, zero, black is zero, uh, white is one. But if we want to control that a little bit, what we can do is we can add in a um, mix node. So the way we're going to do this is first we want to add in an input value. So this is basically just a number node. And if we disconnect our texture, you can see that our roughness was set to 0 0.05. So that's going to put in our value node. Okay, and then we want to mix these two together. So I'm going to add in a color mix RGB. And we will put our base value into the first slot and our texture into the second. And we'll connect that color up to the roughness. Okay. And then the last thing we want to do, I guess there's two things. First, we want to change this to screen. And then we have this factor value. And this is basically the intensity of our effect. So if we go all the way to zero, we're just taking this the value of the first slot. If we go all the way to one, we're just taking the value 
of the second slot, which in this case is the texture. But we can also blend between them and kind of adjust the intensity of the smudges. So if we go really low, um, this is probably the most obvious smudge. Okay, we can also see some of the smudges along the highlights around this little blue area. Okay, you can see kind of what those look like. And then if I go all the way up to one, these highlights are going to get a little bit stronger. And you can see it's also feels like it's taking maybe a little bit longer to render, but um, all the smudges are, are more intense. So I'm going to dial that back a little bit. Uh, and then again, just to illustrate, if we adjust this value, if I set the value uh, roughness to like 0.5, everything is going to get really hazy, but we're still going to have the smudges on top of that. Okay, so it just allows kind of the most amount of control here. Uh, oh, the last thing I actually think I want to do is I want to increase the transmission uh, roughness. And so, oops. Sorry, I'm just moving things around off screen. Okay. So we have we have the roughness of the surface, and that's where the smudges go. But we also have transmission roughness, which is the kind of cloudiness of the glass itself. And so I'm going to keep it really, again, also pretty low, but just a little bit. Make it a little bit less. Perfect. Okay, and so that is really all we need to do with this glass. You can take it further. You can layer on multiple types of dirt and grime and, and smudges. You could add um, scratches to it, you know, just combining whatever imperfections you want into a texture and then mixing that with your base value. Okay. So uh, a couple other glass kind of related things that I want to do. Uh, the first is just a simple textural thing. I'm going to grab the um, inner shelves, give it a new material, call it uh, vending machine shelves. And I'm going to increase the transmission all the way up to one, set the roughness to 0.1. And my base roughness to, like again, 0 0.05 or so. Okay, so just so they've got a little bit of transparency, it's going to help the light from above make it all the way down to the base. Let's also go with our scene world. Now, you might notice if we come up here to the top, uh, I think my settings are probably okay. But you may notice that uh, things start looking black and the light's not getting through. Go over to your render settings and your light paths and just make sure your transmission settings get yeah, minor. I've got mine set to full global illumination. If we just go to like direct light, we might, whoops, we might not see the light getting through enough. That's what we bring. Yeah, so if we bring transmission down to one, now everything is black. So you just need to increase your bounces up high enough and your total bounces so that you can see through it. So the shortcut is, I just went with, you could do limited global illumination. Um, it actually might not even be enough. I keep mine on full, full global illumination. It's usually overkill and increases render times more than necessary. Um, but at least for demonstration purposes, you can kind of see. And we'll talk more about render settings uh, next next week. Okay, so we've got that. And um, get out a local view here. Last thing I wanted to mention is I want to go back to the windows that we added the, the images to. Go to material preview. Oh, that's right, I wasn't in local view, I was just had everything hidden. Okay, so I'm going to let this load here for a second. Got all the textures to come up. There we go. And so the last thing I want to cover is when we did these windows, we got great light output uh, from them. But what we don't have is any reflections coming out of them. And so that's what I want to uh, include now. So we're going to do a couple things. 
we're going to add some smudges, and then we're also going to add some reflectivity in general. I guess we'll start with the reflectivity because that's the that's the new part. It's also a relatively simple part. So um, normally for getting some highlights and some specularity, we just increase either or either decrease the roughness or increase the specular value of the shader, but the emission shaders don't have that value. So we need to add a shader that does. So I'm going to add a shader, uh, principled BSDF, and I'll put it right beneath the mix shader here. And I'm going to control shift click on it. Remember I have the node wrangler add-on enabled edit preferences, add-ons, type in node, and just check that box. It's built into Blender. Okay, so now I've, I basically have a clean um, a clean shader. So what I want to do with this is I'm going to increase my specular all the way. I'm going to set my base color to black, because I don't want this to contribute to the color of the window at all. Set the base color to black. I'm going to set my roughness uh, to where I want it to be which I think yeah we're going to keep that that roughness pretty low see as I bring that down we can start to see the highlights from the world show up in the glass so set it to wherever you think looks good again this is going to be a glassing so it should be pretty sharp uh, in this case I'm at like 0 0.039 maybe go a little bit lower we can start like that, and now as we orbit around, we can see that we're getting some reflections. Now, to combine these two, um, I'm going to go with an add shader. Input shader, add. I'm going to drop it over the line so it connects automatically, and then I'm going to grab the, um, the mission shader trees, or the mix shader, I'm going to drag that into the first slot, and it's going to bump the principal down to the second slot. And now I'm getting a combination of both. And we can look at this. Let me uh, save this real quick, just in case. We can look at this in rendered view. Now we can see that our, we're getting our highlights. Let me turn on, turn on the truss, electrical panels. I'm going to get more highlights just if I turn on all the things that light up. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we can see everything that is reflecting in the window. But we're still getting that light out of it. It just makes it more realistic and more grounded in the world. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is I want to do the same smudge thing that I did on the vending machine. I want to do that. Uh, for the window. So I'm going to use the same smudge texture just because I already have it downloaded and it's fast. Um, if it becomes obvious that we're using the same smudge texture, then we can just swap it out for a new texture. That's not a, a difficult thing to do. But for now, we're just going to basically build the same tree. So I'm going to select my texture, Control T to add my mapping nodes. Now I'm not really using the mapping nodes, but I'd like to have that flexibility there just in case I do decide I want to flip it around or shift it or, or anything like that. Uh, and then we need to add in our input uh, value node. And I want to copy my current roughness value, so I'm going to hover over the roughness, hit Control-C to copy it, and Control-V, hover over the that uh, to paste it. Also, I realize I've been doing this whole thing without having screencast keys on. Apologies for that. Okay. So we've got those two, and now we just need to add in our color mix RGB. Nope, that is not the node that I wanted. So I'm going to hit Shift S, and it's going to swap that node to mix RGB. There we go. We're going to set it to a screen, put the value into the first slot, and our texture into the second slot. There we go. Connect that up to the roughness. And I'll bring that factor down a little bit. And now as this resolves, we can start to see that we're getting some irregularities, some smudges in the window. Again, just to help ground that in reality. So this is the type of thing that, again, you can, you can build on. You can add scratches to it. Um, you can add graffiti and stickers to it. I'm going to show you how to kind of layer graffiti uh, 
in the next video. But it's something that, that really helps flush this out into a more realistic world. Okay, same thing here with our vending machine. As we get those highlights, if we orbit around here, we can see those highlights showing up a bit better. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for this video. It's relevant. Well, I guess, okay, there's one more thing that I could, I could cover just as a quick mention. So let me, I'm just going to hide the vending machine glass here real quick. I just want to talk about the, the monkeys, the Suzanne heads. Um, these are, and they're going to be visible. So I want to do something with them, but I don't want to make it too complicated. So what I'm going to do is more or less just give them a variety of, of textures. So one, um, I ended up giving like a gold texture, uh, but we can also do really easy things like we'll call this, um, monkey emerald. Okay. So if I want this to be an emerald, I can look up what the IOR value of an emerald is. And it is this over so you can see too. Uh, I don't believe it's in the, oh, it is in the quick. So it's between 1.56 and 1.6. So I'll go with 1.56, why not? Okay, so I'm going to increase the transmission, set the IOR to 1.56. And then we need to, oops, need to go into render view so we can actually see the effect of this. Uh, emeralds are green, so we need to make it green. And this is probably a little bit too bright, so we're going to darken it down a little bit. We're also going to decrease the roughness. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, I'm not smoothing out um, the Suzanne at the moment because I like the kind of faceted look. It looks more like a gem. Let me we'll increase the transmission roughness just a little bit. Um, but if you did want to give it a little bit more dimension because it does feel a little bit fake because the, sh the sharp edges are extremely sharp, what we can do, and I'll do this in Material Preview because it'll be a little bit more obvious, um, is we can add a couple of modifiers. So I'm going to first add in a bevel modifier. Okay, you can see the bevels kind of pop in there. I'm going to solid view so you can see the bevels even clearer. And I'm going to increase the segments to three. I'm going to right click and set it to shade smooth. And let's see how that renders. I may also want to add a subsurface modifier to this. Um, but we might not need it. This actually looks this looks pretty good. Now, the, this is a really kind of heavy-handed bevel modifier because it's affecting every edge on it. And I'm just using more or less the default values with the exception of increasing the segments. But now it looks like we have this kind of gemstone monkey head. And I can do a similar thing for, let's say, maybe this one down here. First thing I'm going to do is set this to our emerald monkey head material. And I'm going to click the little uh, new material or duplicate material button. We're going to rename this. And maybe this one is a ruby. And then all we need to do here is change the color. I'll maybe lighten it up a little bit so that red reads a little clearer. And then we can also check our IOR values and see so Ruby isn't listed there. So let's go to R and Ruby 1.7. I'll go 1.77. We'll set that IOR to 1.77. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. I'm also going to select with this selected. I'm going to shift select. My emerald hit control L to make links to modifiers. So it's going to get the same modifier. And then I would probably also want to go back and do a little bit of surface imperfection or surface detail, whether that be subtle scratches or fingerprints. Um, just something to maybe break up the complete smoothness of the surface. But that's the sort of thing and what I'll, I do for um, 
kind of finishing off the monkeys and just adding a little bit of variety in the vending machine. The other thing uh, to do, it would be to just kind of move them around a little bit and just not make them so uniform. So maybe I'll move this one over in the X direction a little bit and I'll move this one even further over, maybe, maybe forward. Okay, and we'll rotate this one. And again, just so that they're not all looking in the exact same direction. Maybe move this one forward as well. Okay, you can also adjust the scale and, and do all, that, all sorts of things like that. But just so we got a little bit uh, more variety to our monkey heads. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, the next one, we'll talk about adding some graffiti and some kind of grunge and grime to the walls.